here we have cheer and we're going to show you how to dress horse generally for basic long lining now you will develop your own method of safely doing this but there are cornerstones that work for everybody and this works this works for me this is Robert Taylor and this works for me this horse has long line before this horse is used to the equipment um, and, and, and these, these pieces of equipment, we, you know, they're found in your barn. And, and, and this horse is not owned by us. It's, it's owned by the lady taking the, uh, the video here, and Andres. Uh, so the normal bridle, you don't, it's not necessary to have this, but this is what he has on when, when she goes outside with him, the, uh, the reins. This is her dressage saddle. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, let, this, let the stirrups down. And Mackenzie, our helper. So the tack must be safe. In other words, your, your lines, your bit, your, your your tack must be safe. It must it must not break. We're doing this outside today because it's nice and sunny. Um, but generally, I would tack my horse up inside in his stable or in a run yard or some confined space. There's no reason why you cannot put your horse in the cross ties and do this. But if you're working with horses that are experienced, that is okay. Um, oft times we work with horses that are not that experienced and I find that they are uh, better off being in uh, an enclosed place. And of course we have Mackenzie here helping us. And when you go to dress your horse, it is always a good idea if you have somebody else with you. If I am doing it inside a confined space, I do not have anybody with me. If I have him in cross ties, I do not um, need Mackenzie there either. This, this uh, piece of stir old stirrup leather here and it's being done with baling twine or whatever, or a belt. I'm going to put this through the stirrup on the far side. And these stirrups are, are just at Anne's riding length. And then I'm going to undo the, undo the girth. Some girths do have a ring here, which I could put, a, put it through, but here I'm going to just put it through there. And then I am going to, oh, super tight. A lot of these times I do not put my tugs away. I do, do not put everything away because if I, for some reason, have to get the gear off, then I need to be able to do it, do it rather quickly. I'm putting this here, and I am tying that girth down, uh, the, the stirrup leathers down, so that they are, uh, they are my runners. Sir Singles have them here, here, here. I like when you're starting off and you're getting used, particularly yourself, getting used to this. I like the fact that, that they're a little lower down and the reason why they're lower down, your, your lines come along here, your reins come along here, and of course they're not going to get caught underneath your horse's tail. Pause. The, the next two pieces of, of equipment are the lunch lines. and. A whip. Now this is a, this is a carriage driving whip. Um, you, you can use a lunging whip. But the lunging whip tends to be way way too long and and, and it's not balanced. If you have a, a whip in your hand, the, the the whip should be nicely balanced so that it's not a, it's not a drag down on on your wrist. I don't carry this around because I do not want to disturb my horse. He's wondering what I'm doing with the whip in my hand. So here, what I do is. And because he's got uh, a lead rope on, so I can turn the horse with what I can do with the reins. And I am going to put the reins up in here. That and once again, I do not, I do not tuck, tuck these away simply because I might need to get them off quickly. Again, I like them doing this inside. <clears throat> However, this fella here should be okay. And I put the, I bring the line through here. I can tuck it over the back of the saddle and tuck it over the back of the saddle. It is still Mackenzie's horse. And as the terminology we use, if I, she has a horse, it's her horse until I say anything different. And I will come around the far side and do exactly the same on the far side. I try not to throw them down. I try not to make rash movements because all those sorts of things are going to perhaps frighten the horse. 
So it is essential that the horse trusts you. It's essential that the horse understands everything that you're going to do. And here we have it. We have two lines that are called lines and long lining. Um, and these lines here, these particular lines were 30 feet long. I took seven feet off them, um, um, perhaps eight feet off them, and I used them for going around in short, smaller spaces with, with, uh, uh, with my starter horses. So we'll take Cheer here, and we'll take him um, into the indoor arena. Here we are in our indoor arena. And what I like to do here is, I like to start a, wall, a horse off against the wall. So I've got Mackenzie to, to bring the horse over here, and the horse is facing the wall. Not at right angles, but say at 30 degrees, so that when I go to take the, the lines and ask the horse to go forward, he does not walk, walk into an open space. If he's going to ch charge off, he's going to charge into that wall. What we have to be careful of is here. That when I take this line here, when, when I take this line here, the other, the simple on this side. On the other side, make sure he stays stand still. On the other side, it is across the saddle. Uh, uh. Now, the danger is, for us, is, is, uh, particularly with novice horses, and that's why I work in a more confined space with novice horses, it's fine for him to come along like this, but as soon as I let the, the, the line come across his rear end, it is a fair chance the horse is going to speed up or get startled or whatever, hence I stay facing the wall. With, with, with long lines, you let these guys go. They stay to your left side. You do not pick them up like a lunch line. You let them drag along behind you. And at the beginning, <clears throat> as long as the horse understands what you want to do and where you want to go, then you generally have good success. And success comes from, from the use of your hands. If you start to, to hold the lines in some foreign sort of way, in which you're not used to, then you will find that you're not, you are not comfortable with the horse and the horse, will, you know, you, you, the horse will reflect your anxiety. So it's important that you, that you use the normal hand that you do when, you are, um, when you're riding your horse. So I'm going to pick the whip up. The whip is always in the right hand. And then I'm going to ask Mackenzie just to uh, unclip the horse but hold on to the line. Hold on to the line. Still her horse. And then I'm going to ask Chia to walk off. And initially I'm going to leave... I'm going to leave the, the line running around the saddle. If, if this line gets in here, if this line gets in here, this is not a good thing. It is there or it's behind, behind his back. I'd rather be behind his back end. But I'm going to see how he goes with this since he's done this before. It's a while since he has done it. Now, when I ask Mackenzie to walk away, she will walk away. The horse will tend to follow her somewhat. So I will keep a little tension on this outside line so the horse stays against the wall. I do not necessarily at this stage expect the horse to stand still because if she walks away, that's movement. That horse may not stand, that is okay with me. If it's a very strong horse, then I make sure it is facing the wall so it just doesn't walk off and take me with it. So when, when I ask Mackenzie to walk away, she will walk away. She's not gonna stay in my way, mainly for her safety because if that horse decides to charge, then you will find that she's going to be in the way. If the horse is upset when I, when I set off, I might ask her to come back, or I might just take the line over the back end and deal with the situation myself. That is more than likely what I would do, because I do not want to put her in harm's way. If the horse makes any mistake, gets frightened in any sort of way, it's important that, the, that I reassure the horse with my hands and with my voice, as to what should be done. It is only your hands and your voice that you have av uh, available to you. Plus, you have the wall of the arena. You would never, and this is what works for me, Robert Taylor, I would never turn my horse that is agitated into an open space. I would turn it into a wall. In an open space, that horse is able to take off. In an open space, that horse is going to be the master. In the open space, the horse is likely to be more agitated, so I will keep the, the horse against the wall. My horse, and if he's prepared to stand, that's fine, stand. 
And you'll notice Eyeball, um, he's a little distracted because we have another horse in here, and that's fine. If, if you have an area and, 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 the, and you have a horse in it and you're not, you're not happy with it for the safety of the other rider, just ask him to stand still somewhere along the line and walk on, walk on, walk on. I'm just going to bring this over the back end. We'll wait, see how he got a little startled. He hasn't done this for a while.